this example, you will learn how to apply the force base approach to solve for bar forces in a truss which is internally indeterminate. We are going to look at this three member truss and recognize here that members AD and BD have a certain cross sectional area. CD has one that is different, but E is the same for all members. We will begin our analysis by making sure that we understand what determinacy we are dealing with. So we will check this. The number of members that we have are three. The number of reactions we have are six. And the reason we have three pin supports, the number of joints we have are four. So we want to look at the total number of unknown forces. It says F is equal to nine and the total number of joints is 4, so the equations that we have, equations of equilibrium, two equations of equilibrium per joint, 4, so this will give us 8. And thus we can do the computation, 9 minus 8 tells us that we are statically indeterminate to the first degree. Now any one of the bar forces could be used in this example, I am simply going to select the force in bar BD. And once I've identified that as the redundant force, I will make a cut through that member. Notice it's a cut. I don't remove the member, just simply make the cut. And so when I get the primary structure, I have a cut there. So my members have separated. I'm going to label this as being delta BD, so the displacement between the ends of the bars where I made the cut. I'm always assuming that those bars are in tension, which means in the primary structure that they would separate. For the redundant structure, I'm going to apply the redundant force back on to those bars. Assuming that those bars are in tension, that actually causes those bars to overlap like this. I'm going to go ahead and label them N B D N B D as the force that I have placed in there, and then the displacement that we've experienced. The displacement I will label as delta B D B D, but we do want to recognize that delta BD, BD can be rewritten in terms of the redundant force NBD times the flexibility coefficient as such. To get the compatibility equation, I will add up the displacements in the two structures as we've got going on here. and I know the displacement in the rail structure is going to be zero. Now please keep in mind that the displacements we are looking at are not the global displacements of this point. It is the relative displacement between the ends of the members and so we know that in the rail structure this does not separate and that is why this is equal to zero when we've got it here. Okay, so we can rewrite this delta BD plus FBD BD times that redundant force. All that is equal to zero. And finally, rewrite it in terms of the redundant force. So it is the displacement in the primary structure divided by the displacement in the flexibility structure. So here is that final form of my compatibility equation that I'm going to be utilizing. So the next thing is, is I've got to then compute what those two displacements are. And in order to facilitate that, I'm going to use virtual work, which will require me to have a virtual structure. So here's, here's my virtual structure where I'm simply going to place a unit virtual load into the place where I had made the cut before. So whenever we are dealing with the virtual structure, we will label all the bar forces 
with a lowercase n. If we're looking at the bar forces in the primary structure, so due to the real load, we will label those as capital N. We're also going to need to know the deflection in the flexibility structure. So you may recall that for a flexibility structure you place a unit load. This is not a virtual load. It's actually a real load. And it causes some kind of a displacement to go on here, which we have been labeling as F BD BD. And so I want to just make sure it is clear in your mind that the load on the flexibility structure is real, the load on the virtual structure is virtual, and that's why it's labeled with a lowercase n. However, what we recognize is these two structures produce the same forces. So for nothing more than convenience, we are going to label the forces in here as a lowercase n. That is only so that we don't have to do the computations twice. But I still want it to be very clear in your own mind, virtual work always requires a real load and a virtual load in the analysis. The next thing we want to do is analyze the flexibility structure, which we're also noting can be doubled up as the virtual structure. So we'll call that the little n values. We know that we have placed a unit load in the vertical member, so we simply need to break these out into their components. So this is 2 over the square root of 5, and I'm going to use little n now for AD. 1 over the square root of 5, little n AD. 4 over 5, little n CD and 3 over 5 little n CD. We've got the two equations of equilibrium written down below. We go ahead and solve for the remaining unknowns. NCD is equal to negative 0 0.5 and little n AD is equal to negative 0 0.671. In a similar fashion the bar forces for the primary structure, that capital N, may be found. And the only thing really to note here is that the force in that vertical member, the one that we cut, is going to be zero just by virtue of it having been cut. So NCD is 15 kips and AD is 20.12 kips. We are now prepared to do the deflection calculations. We're going to put these into a chart. What you need to keep in mind as we proceed here is the basic virtual work equation for deflection in a truss is this NNL over AE, and we sum that up for all the bar forces. So I've already got the lengths, cross-sectional areas with the appropriate units. I've got the force in the primary structure. This is the force in the virtual and also the flexibility structure. And the only thing I don't have in this table is E, but since it is constant in all the members, it ends up canceling out in the very end. And I'll show you that here in just a moment. So this column right here is going to be used to calculate delta BD. And this column here is going to be used to solve for the flexibility coefficient. So what I've got to do is go ahead and sum up both of those columns. And I would get negative 4061 and this one comes up to be 255. So in order to get the redundant force NBD, I'd plug that back into my compatibility equation which is this negative 4061 divided by E and divided by the flexibility coefficient which is 255 divided by E and that is equal to 15.9 kips. The positive value by the way tells me that I did assume correctly and it is indeed intention. Now with that I can resort back to basic equilibrium to solve for the remaining bar forces. So I have this 15.9 kips and of course 
I've got the components as I have had before here. You'll see the equilibrium equations I have down below. And we can finish this up by solving for those. And it comes out to be the following quantities. Since both of those are positive, we can conclude that they are both in tension, which should not be a surprise given the overall configuration of the truss. That concludes this example, and as always, it is an absolutely beautiful day to study structures. <laughs>